Hey guys, Meteor Idol Tris Tomer here with this on the snow, snow before you go forecast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified when my latest forecasts come out. All right, here are my bullet points to kind of guide us through the next seven, eight, nine days. I still have some snow for the Intermountain West through 323, and then after that, we're going to transition into a big ridge of high pressure. It's going to be much warmer and drier across a lot of the Intermountain, 323 through about 328. Um, what's going to happen during that time period, the flow is going to shift up to the Pacific Northwest in B.C., Central and Northern Idaho, Northwest Montana, and really favor that area for heavier snow. But at the same time, the cost of it's going to be warmer air, and that's going to push the rain snow line to a higher elevation. So, for example, a lot of interior B.C. during that time frame might have rain snow line up to 4,500 feet. So you're really going to have to be higher up on these mountains to get the better snow during this time period. Um, let me um, just set the let me set the table here with the uh, the water vapor satellite imagery, and just kind of show you what we're facing. So this is low level. Oranges and reds are going to be your drier air. The whites and the blues are going to be your moisture. We've got a departing storm system out of the Rockies. But here's what's next: big low up here and another low behind it. But the trajectory of both of these will be mainly up into the Pacific Northwest, BC. Central to Northern Idaho, Northwest Montana. Little pieces of them will break off and kind of brush um, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and then quickly move out. But the uh, most of the emphasis is going to be up here in the Pacific Northwest in this area. That's going to be your target zone in that area. And that's going to be for quite some time. All right, let me show you my snow timeline. Best odds of snow. These would be the... The best days for new snow. Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So, for example, in Big Sky, a couple of chances for light to moderate accumulation through 322, 323. Um, in the Wasatch, your next best shot, moderate accumulations are late 321 into 322. Tetons, moderate on 320, heavy on the afternoon, evening of 322. In Colorado, some light shots. And then a moderate to heavy shot on 322. And what you don't see after 322, 323 is that big ridge of high pressure building. And that's going to cut off the flow for a lot of the Intermountain West and warm things up. Now, interior BC, I mentioned the rain snow line going up. So you've got some snow accumulation into the morning of 22, which could be heavy. And then another heavy shot, 23, 24. In the northeast, you might have some snow accumulation late 20 into 21. Um, but also a rain-snow mix is possible. It's a little bit warm. And then moderate snow on 324. Another way of looking at this is my spider chart. Um, best odds of uh, snow. So more purple higher on the web. That's what you're looking for here. So that's like the central and northern mountains of Colorado. That's parts of the Wasatch. That's the Tetons. That's northwest Montana. That's the central and northern mountains of Idaho. That's the Pacific Northwest and interior B.C. And to some degree, it's a little bit of the Northeast. But all the other places are going to be lower on this, with lower chances, less accumulation. So that's how you look at that chart. Let me show you the jet stream forecast. So these are winds up at about 30,000 feet. And I'm looking for the brighter colors and the little dips and waves in it. Those are the storm systems. So we'll start this early on Thursday, March 20th. A little kink coming through the Pacific Northwest northern tier. Bigger storm uh, moving through the, the, the Mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley. Okay, another little kink coming through Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. This is early Friday, late Thursday into early Friday. Uh, okay, here we are midday to late on Friday. Early Saturday, the 22nd, another little kink coming through the northern tier. And then that moves out. Now we start to see the big high-pressure ridging. So here we are early on Monday the 24th, big arcing to the net of the, uh, arcing to the north with the jet that's going to bottle up the cold air, bring in warm, dry weather. Look at that massive ridge across the west. There's nothing uh, that's going to be bulletproof for a few days. All right, here we are midday on Tuesday the 25th, maximum high pressure. There's uh, midday on Wednesday the 26th. And here we are on late Thursday, March 27th. It's not going to accumulate much during that period at all. Here's a snow forecast accumulation over time. So on this map, your light blues are going to be your lightest accumulations under 3 inches. Greens are 3 to 6, yellow 6 plus, reds 10 plus. So we'll start this early on Thursday, March 20th. Most of the snow is up in the Pacific Northwest, central to northern Idaho, northwest Montana, B.C. 
All right, there's late on Thursday. A little bit of that snow comes down and brushes the Tetons and parts of the central and northern mountains of Colorado, and then it's out of here. Here we are early on Saturday, March 22nd. Another storm system, another kink in the flow. Brings some uh, light to moderate accumulations down through the Tetons, Utah, Colorado. Then it moves out. Another little kink in the flow. This is early on Monday, March 24th, kind of moving through the northern tier, and then it's gone. Now we're under massive high-pressure ridging. So this is early on Wednesday, March 26th. There's nothing going on across the west. Everything's being moved into the Great Lakes in the northeast. Okay, let's talk about numbers. Here's my forecast all the way through the 24th, so potentially three to six inches with this final storm system brushing the Wasatch. Uh, potentially 10 to 12 up in the uh, the Tetons in Colorado, two to eight inches. Most of the accumulations in the central and northern mountains, less in the south, very little for northern New Mexico. Nothing for southern Utah or Arizona, and I've got basically nothing for um, the Sierra. Now, pretty big flow up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, two to three feet of accumulation through the 24th. Again, in interior BC, 14 to 20, but you're going to have to be higher up on the mountain because it's going to be warmer. Central to northern Idaho, roughly 18 to 20 inches. I've got a bunch of 16s in northwest Montana. Again, a higher rain snow line. Just keep that in mind with this, uh, this type of flow. Now, in the northeast through the 24th, I think we could see 2 to maybe 12 inches. The bigger numbers up there on Mount Washington, parts of Maine. 6, 7, 8 inches through Vermont, roughly 3 to 5 for a lot of New York State. Okay, we're going to end on the big western map here, and again, probably fitting in one more storm uh, before this high-pressure ridge comes in for Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, um, and, then it's, and then it's high and dry, 323 through 328, uh, where most of the moisture is being directed up into the Pacific Northwest and B.C. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. This is the On the Snow, Snow Before You Go forecast. Take care.